much love and peace to go round. So much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by two amazing ladies who are constantly pushing conversations and beyond conversations actions to prevent Niger the malaria in Nigeria and around the world. Now, the theme for this year's uh, malaria fight, today being the World Malaria Day, is Zero Malaria it Begins With Me. And what they are here to tell us how we can prevent and deal with malaria. Now, today we're joined by a, a talented and beautiful lady. She won the Miss USA Black in 2010, went ahead to win the Eloy Award for Best Actress in 2014, and has gone ahead to co-found, uh, to found the Joyful Joy Foundation. She has taken her humanitarian work all around Nigeria and is pushing it further beyond the boundaries of this country. Her name is Osas Godaro Ajivade. It's a lovely, hey. lovely, lovely yeah. opportunity to be with you. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. And sitting me. right beside Osas is... Um, um, an amazing lady who has also continued in the fight against malaria. Now she holds a bachelor's degree in accounting and finance and followed her passion for hospitality. She um, moved home to Nigeria in 2018 to join the family business and is currently the business development manager at Ekulo Group. And as a group, you have done a lot of research and work towards fighting malaria. And today we are joined by Nkechi Okunko. Thank you for joining us. Hi, uh, thank you. Good thank evening. you, ladies. You look really beautiful and oh, colorful. Thank you. So I would say <laughs> happy World Malaria Day to you both, because I know you do amazing work with regards to creating awareness for um, how we can deal with malaria. But I'll start with Osas. You are the founder of mm. Joyful Joy Foundation. Yes. A lot of foundations, you know, we hear the... They're having like yearly events. Mm -hmm. But I heard you, ha you had one towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You're having another. We will come to what you do with Joyful Joy Foundation. But let's talk about what led you to starting Joyful Joy Foundation. Of course. Well, um, thank you for having us. Uh, started Joyful Joy Foundation um, through tragedy. My sister passed away from malaria in 2006. And so whenever it's World Malaria Day or when the topic of malaria comes to mind, it's very, very... Uh, hits close to home. Um, when I was Miss Black USA, I had to have a platform. And um, speaking with the, with the founder of the, of the pageant, she was talking to me. And I, at the time, wasn't really interested in putting my family situation in the forefront. But she explained to me that it can help so many people. So I should make malaria awareness my, my platform. Mm -hmm. And my, and my story. And so um, once my title of Miss Black USA was done, and I did so much in terms, in terms of work for malaria and getting the word out there, I decided, you know what, I need to continue this. Let's not stop this work because my title is now done. And that's how we developed the Joyful Joy Foundation. Um, my sister's name was Joy. And she loved the song, Joyful, Joyful, Lord, we adore thee. So that's the reason why it's called Joyful Aww. Joy Foundation. And um, the mission of the foundation is to spread more joy. She was a very joyful person. And, um, you know, just spreading more joy. Let's stop the spread of malaria, but spread, the, the, spread joy yeah. within the communities. And we've been doing our thing since 2013. We launched in Nigeria, 2012 in, in the States and 2013 in Nigeria. And we've just been going all over and giving and that's back. That's a bittersweet story, you know, something yeah. that is bitter in the sense that you lost someone, you lost a yeah. sister, yeah. but sweet in the sense that you've taken that pain, you've made it a purpose and you've decided to ensure that because you've gone through this pain, you would help other people not go through the same pain as exactly. well. Let's look at your mindset before your sister passed from malaria. What were your thoughts or what were some of the misconceptions you had about malaria? Because here in Nigeria, once you have headache, you have joint exam, mm -hmm. you have malaria, just go and buy medicine and you'll be fine. You know what? I never heard of malaria before my sister passed away. I was in the States. I didn't know. I didn't have any... It wasn't close to me yeah. or any connection to it. I didn't know what it was. So unfortunately, I, the way that I had to learn was through tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, but as I am today, I'm not going to allow um, 
her death to not necessarily say to be in vain, but I have to find a way to to keep her memory alive, and that's through the Joyful Joy Foundation. And there was one instance where um, we were in Auchi or somewhere um, having a malaria outreach, and we had a pop-up um, outreach in the market. And all of a sudden, people started coming, and they realized that, okay, there's free medication, free testing happening, bed nets, food, water, all this stuff. And, oh, okay, this pregnant woman, she looked like she was about to pop, maybe eight months <laughs> pregnant. She said, okay, she got tested, and she, was, she had malaria. She mm. had no idea. She's the prototype of why we do what we do. My sister was with child when she passed away. So... There's no reason why us as a people, we have the resources, but people are still dying. It's not acceptable. It is not acceptable indeed. Yeah. Let's speak with you, Nkechi. You've done a lot of work and research with regards to malaria in Nigeria. Yeah. Give us an insight into what, it, what the current situation is. How seriously are people taking malaria and how seriously affected are people by malaria? Um, well, how seriously are people taking malaria? I would say not seriously at all, because like you mentioned earlier, you have a headache. It's malaria. You're, you're vomiting. It's malaria. So it's almost seen as something that, I don't know, it's taken for granted almost. And um, what's shocking for me, at least throughout my research um, since I joined this company last year, is to find out that people actually die from malaria. For me, that was shocking. Because growing up, I thought malaria is something you just cure and that's it. But if you look at global statistics even, like 200 million people died in Africa last year out of the 219 million cases reported worldwide. It, it's amazing. So when this started, at the beginning of this month, I don't know if you guys know, a girl in law school in Abuja died from malaria. So I'm like, wow, like people actually die from this disease. This is crazy. So um, yeah, people are dying <laughs> globally in Nigeria. A lot of people are dying. Um, the, guy that spoke earlier today on the news channel, I forget his name, but he's the chairman for the National World Malaria Day Committee, and he mentioned that we spend around 132 million naira a year. Well, we spent that last year treating malaria. Isn't that crazy? If that was money that you could have saved, that could have been pumped back into the economy for other things, like, but we spend that treating a disease that's actually curable if people are aware of how to prevent themselves mm -hmm. from getting malaria. Now let's begin, speak of people being aware of how to prevent themselves from getting malaria. Mm -hmm. What are some of the common misconceptions that people have about malaria and how can we get rid of them? Let's start to break down these myths and you know, these mindsets surrounding malaria. Um, well, one thing I would say is people feel like malaria is like a poor man's disease that only affects people in the rural areas, mm -hmm. which I would say is kind of true, though, because actually, no, it's not true. What is true is malaria can affect anybody, rich or poor. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria, it's particularly peculiar because it's the poor people who can't afford good health care. They don't have disposable income to buy preventive uh, cosmetics or things, bed nets mm -hmm. even. People don't have that much disposable income in this country. So it's, it's um, a misconception, but I think it's to do with the state of the country, which is why it's great with people like Osas who want to give back and contribute to the state of Nigeria. So I, uh, yeah. All right, Osas, tell us what you do, you know, with regards to, we know you're pushing the message of zero, zero um, malaria, malaria mm -hmm. begins with me. Well, how do you as an organization, we know everything you do is free, it's you know, yes. no paid service. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do this? What are the things, the services that you provide and you render? Okay, well, what entails our malaria outreach, which is a monthly thing? The goal last year, um, we did it quarterly. This year, I'm very, very proud um, to, to have it monthly. And mm -hmm. by God's grace, next year it will probably be two, three times a month, and you know, it, it can go on like that. Uh, we have malaria bed nets, or bed nets. Um, we have malaria testing. And if you do have malaria, we'll now give you medication. Um, we have entertainment. We have a DJ. We have um, beverages and snacks for the kids. And we actually had a, a give back, an outreach today. Um, and 
You, you know what? It's it's funny how you can't kill someone someone's happiness if they don't know that they're in a certain state. So we went to Makoko community and they had the DJ there. They were appreciative of getting tested, having um, metatol soap and, and um, bed nets given to them for free. And then we had the DJ play music and they're dancing mm -hmm. in the dirt with no clothes on or some had clothes on or it was hot, but they were enjoying themselves and they were appreciative of just the whole experience. And that is what Joyful Joy is all about. It's about spreading more joy. joy. They don't know that the situation that they're in isn't the best, yeah. but there they are. They're so happy. grabbing on. Aww. Hi, auntie, how are you? Smiling, cheerful, Aww. cordial, nice, sweet, beautiful. It, it, it was... Honestly, one of the best outreaches that we've had to date. And it, it, it just makes all the sense, especially since today is World Malaria Day. And we're really, really proud of you and the work that uh, you do. Being a celebrity and a public figure is exactly. not a thing of a, it's not a catchphrase. We have to yeah. see it in the way that you make society better, which yeah. is exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Let's look at practical ways in which we can tell people to deal with malaria. How do we, what are the practical steps that we must take to curb malaria? Okay, well, the first thing would be to keep your environment clean. I think Absolutely. that's one thing we are pushing a lot of people to really become aware of. That stagnant water is what breeds um, mosquitoes. So if you want to prevent malaria, let's first check our surroundings. And then more so, you have insecticides, even though like inhaling that is dangerous to us as humans. Um, you have mosquito nets, you have coils that you can use, and in recent times you have cosmetics that you can just rub on your skin and the smell will naturally repel the mosquitoes so you don't even get bitten by mosquitoes. So I think um, it's very important that people listen to this, take it into, like actually practice these things because right. people are dying from malaria. It's not just any disease that you can cure. You might be that one person who's unlucky and dies from it. Yeah, it's not as, yeah. you know, we, we make it as common as, oh, I just have a headache. headache. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how people go from there. Let's talk about how often people should go get checked. At what point should a person realize that they need to go get tested for malaria? Not even just malaria, just as human health, you know. Get yourself checked as often as you can, even if you don't feel sick or you're not feeling, but just as, you know, as human beings, we need to make sure that we're on point with our, with our health. Um, I know the luxury of that is not accessible yeah. to everyone, but, you know, for myself, I make it a priority to help my fellow human being as best as I can. We all can do something to help one another. If it's to have outreaches so that people have the opportunity to get health checked, then why not, yeah. you know? Um, and also being, be educated. At our outreaches, I forgot to mention, we also have an educational session where we explain to them the preventable ways of keeping malaria away and how to use the bed nets, how to use the medication and all that. So it's just making it a norm to educate ourselves. And how well are people accepting this education in Kechi? Are they really open to it? Are they excited to you know, hear of, of, of all this things that you're telling them with regards to how to prevent, how to keep the environment clean, and they've been warm and receptive. You know, there's, there's, there are a section of people that would succumb to conspiracy theories. There are people who still think today that HIV is a white man's disease and it doesn't exist. Some educated people, unfortunately, still think that way. Do we have that resistance towards the message you're spreading about malaria? Um, I wouldn't say there's necessarily been resistance, but again, it's more trying to convert people's mentality to understand how serious the disease is. We haven't had any resistance. If anything, it's more like shock and surprise, like wow, mm -hmm. and enlightenment and awareness. So we're getting a lot of that, which is good. Yeah. Really, really good. So, um, yeah. All right, Osas, how would you say that, you know, losing a sister to malaria, mm -hmm. how would you say that it changed you? How, how, how have you been able to deal with it? Now, this is because there are people who have lost loved ones yeah. to malaria. How have you been able to deal with that loss? And what would you say to someone who's grieving from the loss yeah. That malaria wow. brings. I've never gotten that question before. Mm. Um, 
it's not easy, you know? I sometimes think about, like, how she would be or what Aww. she would be doing if she was still here. But then I know that things happen for a reason. God has the master plan. And I wouldn't be sitting here with you all if that Aww. tragedy didn't happen. We wouldn't be helping hundreds of people mm -hmm. if that didn't happen. So I, I always spin things that are unfortunate in my life into a positive and... I know she's looking down. I know she's proud of the work that we're doing in her name. And um, just not easy. I can't, I can't now give advice to those who have been in my shoes in terms of losing a loved one. But I guess it's just taking it a day at a time and finding yeah. ways to honor their memory because it's, it's not right. It's unfortunate of how this preventable disease can now take lives from, from people. But, you know, you move forward, you do the best that you can, and... One day yeah. at a time. Yeah. And we're proud of you, and I'm yeah. definitely sure she's proud of you. Yeah. And before yeah. we wrap up, we know that you have a walk coming up. Yeah. Tell us about the walk. Saturday. 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 I'm so very proud uh, to be <laughs> affiliated with this walk. Um, mm. It's a walk of... I look at it as a walk of inspiration. Um, it's happening April 27th, this Saturday. It's free, free medication, free um, testing, testing, free consultation for yes. doctors, free, free bees, food, food <laughs> entertainment, and you get to exercise. We're walking from, at 7 a.m., from National, um, Stadium. National Stadium in, in Surulere to National, National Theater. Theater. Yeah. So it's going to be a, a good so from National Great Stadium day. to National Theatre yes, mm -hmm. on Friday, the on Saturday. Saturday, my goodness, yes. at 7 a.m. Yes. And it's a free walk, so free testing, free medication. We need to say zero tolerance to malaria. Zero malaria begins with, with me. Yeah. I must continually spread this word. Thank you so yeah. much for the work Thank that you, you do. So How can people follow you on social media? Oh, sure. Uh, at Official Osas. All right. Okay, you. you can follow me at Meditol Nigeria. So that's M E D I T O L Nigeria. Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And well Thank done. You. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.